Oh, we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to part two of our uh, episode <laughs> on gemstones and stuff like that for our podcast here, The Wayward Dragons. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Uh, I feel a little bit wayward myself today. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. Johnny. And I'm Kelsey. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. You know, my other Most name is... Uh, my other name is Shapoopy. Um, but, uh, yes. <laughs> welcome to the second part of our Crystal series. Um, so... For the first episode, we talked about how to properly, like, charge and cleanse your crystals because there are some that are um, not safe to put in water and not safe to put in the sun. So I figured for this episode, we're going to talk about shape, structure, mineral composition, and how you can normally find your crystals for this episode. So I didn't want to info dump and put... A whole bunch of information in one episode to make it really dense um so and then once we get done talking about that we're going to talk about some peach and some yellow and gold crystals and i'm going to apologize in advance for my orange cat who has just now walked into my office <laughs> heard his little peter butter feet um so a lot of this information for all of these episodes, um, they're basically coming from three different books. The Essential Guide to Crystals by Simon and Lu Sue Lilly, Crystals by Janine Harding, and The Encyclopedia of Crystals by Jude Judy Law. So, and I mean, you can find this stuff on the internet, but this is where our... Um, this is where I've gotten my information just because I have a bunch of crystal books at the house. Um, I know, buddy, but you can't come up here. I'm doing something right now. He's trying to get up on the... He's trying to get up on my lap, and I normally have a chair that sits beside me for, like, him. He never sits in it, though. Um, so we're going to first talk about crystal shape, kind of the main ways that you can find them. I'm going to use a lot of math words. Um, so Apollo, my love, my sweet, my little pudding cup, you got a knot. He's really moody today. Um, so crystal lattice pattern. So you have a cubic, um, cube shaped lattice. Most crystals of this type consist of a number of cubes. So more than one cube. Um, and then this one gives examples. So like garnet, um, diamond, fluorite, or copper. Um, the qualities of these patterns, um, they will release tension and encourage cre creativity. I almost say crayon activity. It's not the right word. Um, next you have tetragonon. Um, so it's two pyramids on top of each other. Um, Tetragon? Sure. Big math words, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know Roombas. That's about it. Um, so... <laughs> Parallelogram. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, so example of this would be... Saron. Um, the qualities of this will be balancing and harmonizing... Orthohombic, small, shaped like a small squashed matchbox. So like topaz, peridot, 
Um, the qualities of these will be linking and aiding in the flow of information, which makes sense because it's like oblong. Um, triagonal, tri triagonal, triagonal. Mm, yep, sure. This is shaped like a diamond or a barrel shaped, like long tube thing. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, the examples of this would be like sapphires, um, or a ruby. This, these are going to be energizing or anchoring for you. Monoclinic, um, it's going to be shaped like an elongated, squashed matchbox. Um, the Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Law, she's got pictures with all of these that I'll upload. Um, and she actually includes an eighth one, which I don't, I'm a little, a little suspicious. What's the eighth one? We'll get there. It begins in May. Is that the one that's shaped like a phallic symbol? Amorphous. A-M-O-R-P-H-O-U-S. That's a word. Yep. Um, so hexagonal, so this is going to be shaped like a hexagonal prism. So this would be emerald, aquamarine, beta quartz. This is going to help with organizing and supporting triclinic. Um, this is a lattice that is most variable, having no set angles or length. Labrite is an example. So this is going to be for opening and protective um and then the anamorphous this is lacking any inner structure anamorphous crystals allow energy to pass through freely and act rapidly and may be a catalyst for growth and it just looks like a big blob like as a picture huh so, so i looked up anamorphous crystals mm -hmm. and the first thing that comes up is your analysis what <laughs> so i don't know that's what i was like i've never like in all my other books it's always that those seven and that those are the only seven that you normally see so that's why i was a little So it's crystals with no uh, identifiable characteristic shape. Anamorphous crystals observe observed at a at an acid pH are anamorphous urate crystals, and if they have a basic pH, they are anamorphous. Hmm. Phosphate crystals. Yeah, that's what I was a little suspicious about that information because I was but like, yeah. I don't. It's a little suspicious. Yeah, I'll, like so the only thing I, the only thing I'm seeing is stuff relating to urine. So I. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was a little like. I have mm -hmm. questions. <laughs> I have questions. Um, so, just like with any gem gemstone you're going to have a hardness scale from one to ten um so your one is going to be you're going to want to go up so like your diamond is going to be a 10 type thing um like for example the moonstone in my engagement ring that is considered number six. Talc, that's number one. Um, so if you want to kind of like figure out the hardness of your crystals at your house, um, each mineral can scratch itself or something lower in the table, but will not scratch anything higher. So two marks with a fingernail, that will be like a two. Three marks with a copper coin, four marks easier with a knife blade, 
five marks with a knife played with difficulty, six marks with a steel file, and seven scratches with a window on window glass. So, I mean, there's ways to, like, do hardness scales at your house. I would not recommend scratching your window, though. That I would not recommend. Um, and then different forms of crystals. So this is how you can find them when you are out in the wild. Out in the wild. So you have a mineralogy, mineralogical sample. So this is crystals or groups of minerals still on their matrix. So it's the like the um, the ones that you see that are attached to rocks still and they're still that beautiful like geode type look like you just cracked it open um you have crystal cl clusters so without the rock and it's more than one um examples of this is like amethyst you can get amethyst this way quartz this way um you have single crystals, which is how a lot of people find them. Um, you know, towers, little things that people make. Because um, then you've got tumbled stones. So those would be anything that you could send to jewelry, put in a bracelets, whole nine yards. Um, and then you've got worked crystals, which is they've obviously been formed into something. So like the heart elephants really popular turtles um you know they're cut to make they're cut to make to look like something so you've got that Where's my other book <laughs> i got too many things too many books open on my desk um and then we're going to talk about main groups of mineral of metals and crystals that you can find um, so oxides, so like aluminum, aluminum oxides, um, they form the compound chromium, red and blue forms of which are rubies and sapphires respectively, um, chrysoberyl, Burl? um, mainly it's available in a gold yellow, it's a Berlin, Berlinium aluminum oxide. So if you want to know the mineral compounds, I mean, you've got natural native elements, you've got, which are metals. So you've got gold, silver, platinum, copper, um, diamonds, diamonds, because those are made of carbon, um, titanium, you've got sulfides, so iron, um, and sulfur. Obviously, we're actually going to talk about sulfur. That's actually a really dangerous one for you to have. Um, sulfates that's a lot of the stuff that we have so your clear crystals your clear quartz your amethysts um they're silicone dioxides so it's pretty much everything that you can fucking think of and then you've got mineraloids um such as moldavite that's not for the thing of heart that's for a story for another day um and then you've got your organic minerals so like amber and stuff stuck in amber um yeah moldavite's not for the faint of heart that is a major transformation stone don't go into it thinking that it's going to happen slowly because it will not um all right so when you're looking for crystals you can kind of figure out what works best for you when it comes to the form in which you like them I have all my crystals are different forms. I have a a heart one that's on my desk. That's onyx. I've got a mahogany obsidian that's like a tower. Have you watched this video? There's a guy that like shows you how to break window glass and he uses a quartz crystal tower to break the window. The car window. So like if you're I have not. Yeah. He, um, yeah, he uses a crystal, a clear quartz crystal tower to, or maybe it's rose quartz, um, 
some form of quartz. Um, but yeah, he uses the tower too. Like if you're in a, um, um, your car gets in water and you can't get the window open, he, he's like, you can open it with a crystal tower, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, all right. Now we're going to talk about my favorite part, which is all the different crystals. So peach. So when you deal with colored crystals, the, like if you have like a peach moonstone, for example, or whatever, the peach, is, the color is very significant, you know, that does a different property, but it also obtains the properties of the main crystal. So you've got quartz, that's all these different fucking colors. It does have properties of the quartz, but the color makes, there are certain properties that go with the color, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Peach stones are um, for gentle energizing. <coughs> um, and combining love with action. So, Mangano Cellulite. That looks really cool. Um, so it's a harness scale. It's on a three. You're going to find it as hexagonal in a lot of places. Um, so it's beneficial for people who have trauma, a lot of trauma and a lot of pain, a lot of problems with self-worth and self-acceptance. Um, you know, if you have anxiety problems, if you um, kind of have a lot of emotional stress, it's also because it's... Um, with your heart it's going to help with some blood things um but because this is an orange you know it's that mangano it's got properties just for that color but because it's calcite it has calcite properties um so that's what a lot of these colored ones are going to be um so it's a stone for forgiveness it brings unconditional love releasing fear and grief um Unikite. So this is monoclinic. Hardness scale of six. I have this one. I don't know where it's at though. Um, it helps with electromagnetic smog, recovering from major illnesses. It helps with your um, reproductive system, weight gain, pregnancy, skin, tissue, hair issues. Um, this is a stone of vision. It balances your emotions with spirituality and it does help open your third eye. Helps with grounding after meditation or medical physical work. Um, it's about rebirth. And it helps heal from past life. If you go to like someone that helps you uncover your past life. So there are people that will help you do that. Just be leery just with any if anything when you start seeing those people. Um, peach cellul selenite. Uh, so this is going to help with emotional healing, judgment, insight. Um, it'll help align your spine, flexibility, mercury poisoning from dental work. Um... So it's going to carry the properties of cellulite, cellulite, um, cellulite, but it's a stone for emotional transformation. It's a powerful healer and it's a perfect, um, it's perfect for people who are immersed in old trauma and who need to view their past lives in the context of their present life. Um, it helps draw issues of abandonment, rejection, alienation, and betrayal. It transmutes the energy into healing, forgiveness, and acceptance. Peach adventuring. Adventuring. So this is triagonal. Harness scale of seven. The peach ones honestly look pink to me. Um, so this helps if you're shy, if you worry a lot, you have a lot of emotional stress. Um, it helps you balance your male to female energy because we both have both in us, not just one. Um, yep. creativity, great. Yeah, that word's hard today. Um, migraines, allergies, cholesterol, heart attacks, anti-inflammatory. Um, 
So it does carry the normal properties of the Ventrain, um, but it's considered a lucky stone that opens the door to new possibilities, promotes the making of opportunities. And this is another thing, because we'll, we'll eventually talk about transformation stones. It will help you transform. It will help you get things going, but you still have to do the legwork. Like, you still have to do work. It's not going to completely pave the path. Um, so yellow and gold crystals. So they will work with a solar plexus to mind, help you balance emotions. Um, they were traditionally used to cure like jaundice and other diseases can, um, of the liver. They're excellent with helping with uh, seasonal depression, which a lot of people in the colder climates you do suffer from seasonal depression. Um, because it's going to bring the warmth of the sun to you. Okay, because it's yellow. Um, so, the first one, talk about the golden healer. It is a quartz. Um, it's, it'll help with multi-dimensional healing. Helps restore energetic wholeness. Um, it's a master healer with high concentrations of the universal life force. Golden healers are extremely high vibration. Um, don't they just have a warning on this that it's a high vibration stone? So it'll help. The stone facilitates making profound changes in your life with minimal effort. I doubt that. All right, citrine, 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 citrine. I have a lot of citrine. Work. Citrine. Um, so this is going to help with letting go of the past, self-esteem, phobias, um, detoxing, kidney and bladder infections, constipation, menopause, hot flashes, balancing hormones, um, itching, creativity, depression, um, but it's a powerful cleanser and regenerator that carries the power of the sun. The ones that I have look more green. Um, it absorbs and transmutes and grounds negative energy. Um, it protects the environment. It's um, particularly beneficial for attracting abundance and should be placed in a cash box or if you do like a money bowl type thing. Um, where's the other one? Oh, Herkimer, Citrine Herkimer, Golden Herkimer. This is kind of what mine look like. Um, and my husband actually has a Herkimer diamond. We'll talk about those later. This Moldavite is with a Herkimer diamond. Um, so you can use this for sensitivity to environmental issues, optimism, if you are constantly a pessimistic person, um, stress, detox, multidimensional cellular healing, um, recalling past life injuries and disease. This kind of looks like a major past life kind of, um, crystal. Um, it is a high vibration stone. Just be careful with that. Um, amber. That's another popular one. And a lot of people see amber with like stuff stuck inside. Like insects or like leaves or something. <laughs> um, so this helps with memory, trust, wisdom, peacefulness, decision making, stress, throat. Uh, stomach, kidneys, bladder, joint problems, wound healing. It's a naturally antibiotic. Um, amber beads have been found in graves dating back to 8000 BCE. Um, because of its natural warmth, amber was regarded as a living being. And the Chinese believe that the souls of tigers metamorphosized, metamorphosed into amber at their death with 
When amber is rubbed against wool or silk, it becomes electrically charged. Its Greek name was electron, which from which the word electricity is derived. Strictly speaking, amber is not a crystal. Being tree resin that solidified and became fossilized with strong connections to the earth, it is a grounding stone with higher energies. It's a powerful healer and cleanser that draws disease from the body. It helps clean the environment and your chakras. Oh, we can talk about barrel. Nemonite? Burl. Burl. I should remember it's pronounced like Earl. <laughs> Earl. Earl. Okay. Limonite. L-I-M-O-N-I-T-E. Um, it's the generic name for iron oxide. The name derives from the Greek limons. Um, it helps with dehydration, cleansing, musculoskeletal system, iron and calcium analysis of assimilation, jaundice, fevers, liver. Um, it stimulates inner strength particularly under extreme conditions. Oh, and this one, it also says see red or yellow phantom quartz. For that one. Septarian? This one looks really cool. I think I have this. Whoop. Shit. Um, this helps with a lot of stuff, and this actually looks really pretty. Um, a seasonal affective disorder, patience, holistic healing, tolerance, endurance, laziness, emotional stress, um, calcium uptake in the bones, skeleton, skeleton joint problems, um, tissue healing. This is like a good, like three finger paragraph of stuff. Um, it helps with grounding night twitches. Muscle spasms, fear of the dark, nightmares, lawsuits. I'm a little skeptical with that one. Um, Septarian is reportedly named from Latin Septern or Seven because the mud ball from which it formed on the seabed splits into seven points radiating in every direction. Okay. Um, it is also said that it arises from Sep. Sep I can't pronounce that. Or enclosed or wall, combination of calcite, calcedion, and ar aragonite. It'll, it'll look either gray or yellow. Um, it's connected to divinic energy. It's an excellent support for self-nurturing, caring about others, and caring for the earth. Um, it's a great tool if you are someone that has to public speak a lot. Um, makes an individual it'll make you feel better about communicating with a group maybe it's just like calcified coral um ah uh, my favorite golden tiger's eye so if you buy like protection bracelets there's a form of tiger's eye in that um Oh, sorry. Uh, I've, I've had to set a reminder on my phone to drink more water. So, sorry. <laughs> That's part of the narrow spicy upstairs. That's a virgin problem. It, well, okay. Yeah. Side note. Minor, because that was my phone going off saying drink more water. I find going to the bathroom a major inconvenience to me. I've always felt this way. I hate going to the bathroom always felt this way i so, don't think there's very many people that actually just enjoy going to the bathroom like i just i just find it a major inconvenience in I my could life be wrong, but... <laughs> like, so i will purposely not drink liquid so i don't have to go to the bathroom as often like that's that's my rationale is while i don't have to go to the bathroom as often i don't have to keep interrupting myself if i don't drink the fluid to go to the bathroom yeah yep um so back to it Golden Tiger's Eye. Um, this will help with internal conflicts, pride, willfulness, emotional balance, yin yang, 
um, depression, eyes, night vision, throat, reproductive organs, um, broken bones. So it, it's going to carry the normal properties of tiger's eye. Um, but golden tiger's eye assists in paying attention to detail. Um, it award warns against over, uh, mm, warns against danger and encourages you to take action from a place of reason rather than emotion. Um, it's good for if you have an important meeting to have that with you. Um, it'll help with psychic attacks if you are being psychically attacked by someone. It draws out negative energy from the solar plexus and returns it to its source. I don't know about placing it in your car. You got to be really careful about placing it in your car. Um, but it, it can protect against accidents. And it only should be worn for short periods of time. The last one that we're going to talk about. Yeah, so I'll say this. What? I, I'll say this about placing stuff in your car or attaching stuff to your car. Don't be the idiot that, like in the picture, that <laughs> glued that? a bunch of gemstones to their steering wheel. That way, when the airbags go off, it basically blows out the rocks into or the stones into their face. Don't, Don't do that. that. Don't do that. Like, be be aware. Like, put them in like the door of your be car. Your you know, like I have stuff that hangs from my um rear view mirror or like my um I've got stuff that just hangs around in my car but it's never like in a place that like can puncture anything like right um and I mean that's like with anything just be careful where you're putting stuff um like if you have animals make sure that your crystals are in a high enough place to where your animals can't get them especially if you have cats I can't tell you how many times I've caught my cats on counters just pushing stuff off. I have a, a kitten who likes to eat everything, you know, like Apollo likes to put everything in his mouth. They're just like kids. Just be aware of where you keep your crystals too. Um, so last one we're going to talk about is the almighty sulfur. Um, so yeah, speaking of baby girl she's now under the desk um when you're handling sulfur bees please be careful um it is a toxic thing um so make sure you wash your hands before you touch anything else when you handle handle sulfur um because it is toxic to everyone um so it's going to help with exhaustion serious illness infections fevers colds um fibrous or tissue growth painful swelling and joint problems um sulfur is associated with volcanic regions and has traditionally been used during magical working to drive off demons an excellent it's an excellent stone for anything that erupts such as feelings violence skin conditions or fevers it can bring latin metaphysical abilities to the surface it's a powerful stone for karmatic karmatic cleaning cleansing it has a negatively negative electrical charge and is extremely useful for absorbing destructive energies or emotions placed anywhere in the environment it absorbs negativity removes barriers to pros progress um it identifies with negative traits within the personality reaching rebellious stubborn um and opening the way to kind of change that it blocks repetitive and distracting thought patterns so if you are like myself who find yourself in a loop sometimes might not be a bad idea um just be aware when you handle it wash your hands <laughs> yeah the other ones are a little bit more brown that looks like a pill Yep. And we're at green. All right. So it is now time for our tarot cards. Last one of the year. Dun, dun, dun. dun. 
the last one of the year. I have multiple tabs open, and I'm like, which tab is it? Which tab is it? Instead of just <laughs> reading the tabs at the top. I'm, I'm, I do that, too. <laughs> I do that, too. Like, you dude, want me to... Let's read and find stuff out instead of just jumping around. All right. Yeah, you go ahead and start. So I have nine before Christmas deck, so I pulled the Ten of Needles, which is the Ten of Swords. Um main words for this are failure collapse and defeat the tale of the suit of swords is a powerful metaphor one that ends in tragedy the swords are a symbol of the intellect of intelligence and logic and yet we find the final culmination of this suit a complete and total defeat of the spirit we must realize that the swords are a weapon that can immense that can have immense potential for destruction or for good the story as it unfolds from the ace to the ten is one where an untrained individual who uses this weapon for futile fatal choices and spends an entire lifetime attempting to run away from the power of the swords this person believes the swords are internal to him when they are part of him but when they inevitably return he once again suffers his his pain is not the pain of circumstances, essentially, but the pain of fear of anxiety. After the hopelessness of the Nine of Swords, what could have happened? Were you overwhelmed by the pressure, or did you take the final sword upon yourself and admit defeat? This card's lesson is when I accept an ending, I also release myself from its power. Okay. And it wouldn't so be. So, interestingly enough, normal reading without I pulled, pulling a cup i pulled the five of cups okay yeah i pulled the five of cups so it actually ties in interestingly with that so the five of cups often appears in a tarot reading when a situation hasn't turned out the way you expected and you are sad uh regretful and disappointed instead of moving on with your life you are choosing to wallow in your self-pity. All you can focus on right now is what went wrong and how you, you failed. Mm -hmm. Sure, feel the feels, but set yourself a time limit for your self-pity and then pull yourself together and move on. The Five of Cups suggests you're stuck in the past and can't uh, let go. Old wounds and bitter memories flood your mind as you think about what happened, you may blame yourself or believe you're a victim of life circumstances. These negative emotions are holding you back uh, from your fullest potential. Release them so you can move on and create positive change. So I think these two fit really well together. And I think uh, uh, if I could kind of uh i think that this is a really good way to end the year yeah. with these cards mm -hmm. because you know we often hold things back we often hold ourselves back but at the end of the year and we're moving into something new yep we need to let go of the things that have held us back and have prevented us from moving forward in life yep. we need to say hey the, i'm not letting that affect me i am moving past that I am over that part of my life. I am over that situation in my life and I am better for it or mm -hmm. I am going to be better for it and move forward and make ourselves better. We need to take it, put on a big girl pants <laughs> and push forward. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, life sucks sometimes, but you know what? You know it does. Keeps going on. So we got to keep going on with it. I actually had this this was a conversation i kind of had with my husband because of the situation with my grandpa of just yeah i just i'm done i'm walking away but also grief is weird um and you lose yourself for a minute you know but it's also yeah. toxic is toxic and um I'm done dealing with that. I'm done. 
Grief is weird, folks. Grief makes a lot of people weird. So, in the new year, we will be talking about... Where did my sheet go? Um, our next episode, because we just talked about different forms of crystals, we're going to talk about pendulums and wands. I didn't want to group that with everything else with like the different ways that you can get crystals like tumbled and stuff i personally felt like pendulums and wands are kind of their own separate entity so that's how you can use crystals is in a form of a wand or a pendulum so that will be our next episode like i said i didn't want to info dump on a lot of people and just kind of put all this information in one so it's broken up over we got two more three more wands and pendulums um and then we're going to talk about crystal layouts and that's an episode all within itself and then um jewelry and um should you activate your crystals through meditation i personally don't that's my personal preference but there are people who do that my husband is one of those people um so join us in the new year um i didn't say this on our review episode but it's been going around on book talk lately we we are two people that read a lot of books um read what you want enjoy the things that you're gonna enjoy next year don't compare your goals to other people's goals i think that kind of goes well with our cards um as you kind of break away from toxic yeah. stuff don't compare yourself to other people i know that's kind of going around on book talk because there's a lot of people that read a lot of books johnny reads so many books than i do during the year just so many books but it's also fluctuated where i've read more than he has it's just how life circumstances happen you know you're in your own little boat don't compare your book yeah, there's, to some, there's some weeks yeah there's some weeks some months that i don't get any books read yeah yeah so. just as you leave all the toxic stuff behind just also as you go forward don't compare yourself to other people i was actually having this conversation with my niece um you know everyone's timeline's different and everyone's in a different circumstance don't compare yourself to other people have realistic goals um we'll share our goals for next year like maybe we'll do some personal goals like mine is less screen time <laughs> trying not to like scroll like dump scroll like where you have wash reels all the time that's a goal of mine this year is, to, scroll, not, yeah. is to not doom scroll and to physically read more not audio i because my job circumstance changed i don't get to listen as much so i have an opportunity to read more and by cutting down on screen time i get to physically read more so maybe we'll do like a end of the year thing yeah. next year because i've saved over 900 dollars for my local library this year just some physical books so maybe we can do something like that next year tell us how much you saved from your library keep your receipt because i meant 900 dollars, folks Ooh. yeah that's a... and that doesn't count like that, that's um, a cool thing yeah that doesn't count on libby um libby is just for like audio and like kindle um, there are certain libraries that when you check out, when you go physically there to physically get something at the bottom of your receipt, you get like, you've saved X amount of money. And I'm like just shy of $900 this year. I'm at like eight ninety five or something like that. So I, I think that, I think it's cool. Everyone at my work is just like, oh my God. And I'm like, I don't have the money to spend on books, guys. Like, and it supports my local library. Your library does books Books. The one I'm reading because I read in large print because I'm old. Um, thirty-seven dollars. I don't have thirty-seven dollars. Are you kidding me? Like, so yeah. yeah so, so support your local libraries. Uh, <laughs> leave the toxic stuff behind. Support local businesses too. Yeah. If you yeah. have like a small business that does like used books and stuff, support them too. Yeah. Yep. 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 Always support small businesses. Fuck Amazon. Yep. Amazon's convenient. 
As always, please join us on Facebook and Instagram. I do post pictures and stuff that go along with the episode. If you have a topic recommendation or you have a book recommendation, you can email us at thewaywarddragons at gmail.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and please, please, please tell a friend. <laughs> so, yeah, until next time. Yep. Uh, so, yep, I'm Johnny. And I'm Kelsey. Bye. Bye.